So, what can derail my idea of uh, Capital DC being able to give 10.37 cents uh, for their FY22 dividends? Continue watching because uh, I'll be adding a bonus perspective, uh, especially about their growth, which could probably uh, give a reason why I feel I will continue investing in Capital DC uh, even at this current price. I think the current price is around 2 point, 2 point something. Okay, so first part, what would derail 10.37? Um, kind of grateful to attend the Capital DC read AGM. Uh, that was held on Wednesday afternoon. Uh, not many questions asked, but I had to ask one question after he, listening to what the management team had to say, and that was income support. So normally, when our rate managers buy new buildings, uh, there will always be one of these new clauses that is termed as income support. Uh, basically, right now, I also you can see that I have an iPad here, uh, and here's where I'm going to put it uh, and animate it. So it's like a video on a video. Uh, you can see that uh, previously, if you have watched the other video about the 10.37 cents uh, as their FY22 dividend, my own assumptions, right? Um, it is good to hear that the new acquisitions are not under any income support as of now. Perhaps it's the way maybe I phrased the question because uh, during the AGM, right, I asked how many centers have income support. So uh, if you invest in your own REITs and your REIT manager is buying new buildings, one of the crucial points is to know whether is there this income support. Uh, I did not feel that uh, it was a much issue uh, for Capital DC REIT because uh, if you look across the entire portfolio of uh, properties, uh, across data centers, uh, the occupancy rate is like either 98 or 100, except one of the data centers in Malaysia, which is around 68%. So uh, the management team shared that the only one newly acquired uh, data center, which is right now, if you look at this iPad, right, it is this London DC, right? Uh, since the revenue recognition uh, would start in January uh, 2022 and that is the only data center uh, that's currently going to receive income support uh, I remember they say it's around 500 500k right 500k and that will last till 2024 uh, reason why I would like to take note is because uh, when I invest in Capital DC, uh, I this is the only rate that I have. I have included two elements: one, growth; two, the dividend part. Uh, so at least for the dividend part, let's sort it uh, part by part. For the dividend part, when a new rate is acquiring a lot of new buildings, income support uh, works against uh, me if the occupancy rate isn't high. Why? Because uh, there's this income support that will prop up the revenue and support it down there. But once the income support uh, has expired and the occupancy rate is not what I expect, that is where uh, the rate would have lower revenues. And once, once it starts to have lower revenues, uh, it will just trickle down to the amount of distributions per unit. Okay, so that's the first thing that I learned from that AGM and please review your portfolio if you are investing in other REITs or perhaps your REIT is buying new uh, buildings. So Capital DC, out of all the new acquisitions, only the London DC uh, has a new, still has an existing income support. So that's the first part. Uh, the growth part is actually the bonus part. Right, because uh, another question that uh, a shareholder asked, uh, it's kind of long, but he was, his question was from the growth perspective of uh, Capital DC, talking about uh, operating expenses. But in fact, uh, I felt that I didn't ask another question. In fact, I should have asked the management, 
hey, when are you buying the next property? What is your selection criteria? Because uh, the for businesses to grow, either we can slash the operating expenses, but while we can slash the operating expenses, we only can slash it until certain parts, right? And in fact, if you look at the property, uh, property expenses down here let me just put one picture you see that the biggest part is the facility management there is there is no other uh, expenses that I feel we can reduce or I can ask my management to reduce right so naturally that led me to think okay so now I can't slash any more expenses how can I grow the revenue because here's the bonus part which uh, I'll go slower so that you can take notes so what I have down here is that I wrote down what I wanted to write and down here I also want to animate uh, what I wrote down here so the bonus part right okay so the bonus part is gross perspective okay gross perspective I have two key ingredients uh, if you have watched or follow or subscribe to my channel you will know that uh, I did post I think three videos about Capital DC right uh, Capital DC only came into my portfolio since uh, the end of 2021 so coming back the growth perspective there are two key ingredients that I'm looking at and why I'm willing to invest uh, in Capital DC right now first ingredient okay are you ready Number one, the first ingredient is the 90% gross profit margin. Okay. Uh, as I have Suntech and I have CICT in my REIT portfolio, uh, the other two REITs don't go to a 90% GPM. Okay, so that is really one of the, you know, like I will consider it like from a business point of view, having a 90% GPM. Uh, it's something that is favorable in my selection criteria. So that's my first ingredient. The second ingredient is uh, ingredient two, the fifteen percent returns on borrowing. If you watch another video that I had when I. Uh, compare this return on borrowing criteria across my other three reads uh two reads sorry capital dc suntech and cict right uh, capital dc was able to generate a 15 percent return on borrowing so what does this mean means that one capital dc still hasn't reached that you know the debt borrowing or their borrowing uh, limit right means that every dollar that they're going to borrow they're going to return 15 cents as compared to the other two reads right so if now if i to compare between my suntech and my cict and against a capital dc right the returns when they take the additional borrowing right from capital dc is definitely way higher and that is where uh, the growth perspective I've included that, hey, maybe probably right now, uh, let's assume that the 9.851 cents that they have, that Capital DC has given out as FY21 dividends. Let's say that stays stagnant, no other, no other business uh, disruptions, everything works the same, there's no suddenly any other weird scenarios coming in. The 9.851 cents developed by the current, I think it's around 4.5 or 4.6 or something uh, as of recording. Uh, but that is going to be the baseline but once they start expanding right they maintain their 90 percent gpm and they pop they boost their dpu by leveraging properly on every dollar of borrowing right that is where it's like you are buying the at this current price of capital dc you're buying the future growth so uh, that's the question that i'll ask uh, in the next egm uh, when I meet my capital DC uh, management uh, and I hope that uh, this video has uh, given you some clarity into my thought process especially about capital DC read and I really need to thank that friend for nudging me on this capital DC read
and more importantly to the 230 subscribers uh, of my channel really appreciate you for uh, subscribing uh, if you truly enjoyed this video uh, just comment the one greatest takeaway uh, in the comments below and if you have friends who invest in capital DC or perhaps is looking to invest in REITs and need a framework uh, of course on my channel there are some playlists uh, just tag them in the tag them in the comments I believe you two can tag can tag your friends or perhaps just share with any means that you find comfortable WhatsApp, Telegram, Facebook, anything so that's what I wanted to uh, document down on the today is the 24th April yeah 24th April so Singapore is opening up I look forward back to those physical AGMs where I'll be able to ask more questions uh, with my Capital DC read managers. So, thank you very much. See you in the next video.